When is the first time you asked that a list of abusers be compiled, both accused <coughs> or credibly accused? When was the first time I asked that that? Um, um, I believe it would have been in October when we were um, making our uh, plans to do disclosure. Um, you're talking about October of? 2013. And who did you ask to do that? It would have been the members of the staff, the canonical mm -hmm. uh, chancellor, the civil chancellor, and the delegate for um, safe environment. And specifically, who are you talking about here? I talk about Father Dan Griffith. I talk about uh, Joe Kippers. I would talk about Susan Muharin. Susan who? Will Heron. She's the secretary to the uh, vicar general? No. No. She is the, she's the oh. uh, uh, chancellor for uh, canonical affairs. Okay. And when was such a list first compiled, to, compiled uh, for your eyes? in October 2013. And um, how many um, priests or deacons were on it? My recollection is that there were um, 36 on the original list. And then how many, that was the original list of the Credibly accused, as has been described, you're talking about? Correct. And then were there any added to that? Because that list had been compiled originally in 2004. Uh, we're now in 2009. Any new names? 2013. 2013. Um, there were uh, subsequently another nine that were added to the list. And any of those now on the credibly accused, publicly disclosed? They're all publicly disclosed, and they're all out of ministry. All nine? Yes, out of ministry and without faculties to function as a priest. Did you ever see any lists of priests accused of sexual abuse of minors before October of 2013? No. Did you ever ask anybody to compile one or prepare one or give you one? Um, I did not. As the Archbishop, isn't your first goal and primary to make sure first the children's souls are safe in the Archdiocese? It certainly is. It's my primary goal to make sure that children are safe. Well, then why wouldn't you make making sure you get all the information possible from all those under your charge about? Well, I had. Yeah, who I just could, just a minute, let me finish it. Who could pose a risk of harm to those children? As I indicated before, uh, I had that conversation with Father McDonough and others when I first became coadjutor archbishop. I knew that they were under the monitoring system and uh, I felt that uh, they were not uh, putting children at risk. But that was back in 2008. We're now in 2013. Why hadn't you done more before? Well, I think we have done more. I mean, we've done the Virtus program, as I indicated. We've done uh, background checks on everyone. We've had uh, seminars and uh, programs that were our clergy and uh, for our staff. So we, it, is, it isn't as if we weren't working on this. And as I've said before, that our number one priority is to make sure the children are safe. When you got um, the compilation in 2013, in October, was that made publicly known? Yes. To all the people? 
That was publicly dis disclosed, yes. Okay. And did you turn any of the files pertaining to any of those and or all of those accused offenders over to law enforcement agencies? To my knowledge, we did not. They were all out of ministry. Yeah, but they may have been guilty of crimes, right? Um, that could be, and so I, I believe some of them would have already been turned over to the police. But you don't know which ones, do you? I don't. Because you made a conscious choice to not turn them all over, correct? Well, objection, counsel. Again, you've made a misstatement of facts for the purposes of your own uh, needs here. Uh, if anyone has ever asked, you can ask, did anyone ever ask you that you've not turned over a file? You can respond, Archbishop. Archbishop, the question was, you made the conscious choice to not turn all the files over to law enforcement, correct? I don't believe it was a conscious decision. I think we were trying to disclose uh, to the public for the safety of children, um, those who had uh, abused. But there's a difference between identifying names and turning over files to law enforcement, correct? Well, objection, it misstates evidence. I'm not sure that the Archbishop has a You can answer the, the question. Difference you for what? There's a difference between disclosing names to the public and turning over files concerning those names to law enforcement, correct? It would be a difference, yes. Okay, let's talk about those two things. You're saying you turned over the names to the public, right? Yes. yes. Okay. How many of those files of those names of offenders that were made public were turned over by the archdiocese to law enforcement? I can't answer that. Sorry. Can you answer that any were? Uh, no. Is it correct to say that no file had ever been turned over after a determination had made that a priest was credibly accused to law enforcement until and unless law enforcement asked? Object to foundation. Are you talking about while he's been the archbishop? Yes. yes. I don't recall. So is it fair to say that your answer is that you have no recollection of ever having voluntarily said, look at, we just looked at this file and made a determination internally that this is a credible allegation. Let's just turn it over to law enforcement. But, but whether it's Chisago County, Washington County, Ramsey County, Hennepin County, let's just do that voluntarily without a request. As far as you can tell or remember, you never made that decision. No, correct? I think that there were um, cases that were turned over to the police in, d in December, I believe, with uh, uh, Father Gallatin. Okay, now we're talking about December of 2013. 2013 yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Um, There were three, but I can't think of the, the other two. Did you turn those files over to law enforcement, to the police? I believe we did. To whom? Um, I think it was the St. Paul Police, police Department. Had they requested, or did you do that on your own initiative? I don't recall. <coughs> so, do you recall ever, on your own initiative, ever ordering any files to be turned over without request by law enforcement? I don't have that recollection, I'm sorry.
Have you reported any of the offenders uh, to the CDF? I believe we have, yes. Who? <sighs> Waymeyer, certainly. And uh, I believe uh, Montero. Um, And uh, I believe there was um, another priest by the name of, of, of Busman. So there have been uh, files turned over to the congregation. Wehmeyer, Bussman, and whom else? Uh, Montero, I think. Although that may not be because he wasn't our priest. So I, I, I'm not sure about that one. When was Wehmeyer? Uh, shortly after he was uh, charged with the crime. When was uh, Bussman? Before I, my arrival as Archbishop. And um, Montero, you're not sure about it. No, but it no. was not. Have, it was not have done by you. It probably wasn't because he wasn't our priest. He belonged to another diocese. Um. Under the SST uh, issued in 2001, you're required to report to the CDF, are you not? Yes. And required in your quinquennial report to also disclose any allegations of sexual abuse? Yes. Have you done that in the quinquennial report? Um, yes. And so who did you disclose in the quinquennial report? I don't recall right off the top of my head. The quinquennial report would have been um, I want to say 2010, but I'm not sure about that. Um, and so I just don't have that recollection right now. Did you report Shelley to the CDF? I don't re recall. Isn't that something you would recall if you had? It should be. I agree. Um, I would be. Uh, Speculating, though, to say that I did. Do you have any recollection of any others having been reported by you or your offices? to the CDF under the SST requirements? All that we were required to would have been handled by the canonical chancellor. And um, you're the reporter and the one that signs off in that report, however, are you not? I am.
Father Waida, um, Joseph Waida. Um, Council, is it a decent time for a break? Um, I mean, sure. if you want to finish this, no. that's fine. But it's I, fine. We can go in an hour and a half. Sure. Yeah, no. Thank you. We're, we're going off the record at 1215 p.m. This is video number three in the deposition of Archbishop John Neinstead, taken on April 2nd, 2014. Time now is 1.04 p.m. Archbishop, before the break, I had begun to ask about uh, Joseph Waida. And uh, did you become aware that they had, uh, Rome had conducted a canonical trial, a penal trial of him, and findings had been made? I, I do really recollect that, yes. Did you become aware that um, um, it was, it, uh, the instruction was to remove him from the clerical state? I don't recall that particular part of it. Did you become aware that at some point in time uh, the instruction from Rome was uh, reinvestigated um, by your office or at your instruction by Kevin McDonough? Did you ever instruct that to be done? I did not. So that if it was done it was your predecessor? Must have been yes. Are you aware that um, McDonough re did, did reinvestigate Waida um, after the Rome instruction and um, uh, made the recommendation that Waida be suspended for ten years from ministry? Are you familiar with that? I'm not familiar with that at all. Um, at this point in time, what are your plans pertaining to Joseph Waida? Is he allowed, going to be allowed to continue in ministry, or is he going to be reinstated? He's, uh, my understanding is he's not uh, to be functioning in, in ministry at all. Did you become aware that there was some controversy around McDonough's um, 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 findings that contradicted those of Rome? That must have been before my time. Okay. Could, could I make a, um, a correction? I was told by my uh, counsel that I was confused about the um, 2004 um, investigation of the Shelley uh, computer. Apparently, um, we turned that over to this Mr. Sutter, Sutter, who was a retired police officer. That's why I thought he had been turned over to the police. And then that was turned over to the forensic, so I got that mixed up. I thought it went to the forensic first and then to the police. Um, well, Sutter, uh, uh, Sutter, S-U-T-T-E-R, S-E-T-T-R is an investigator hired by the Archdiocese. You're aware of that? Yes. Yeah. But apparently a retired uh, officer. Yeah. And, and uh, so I got that confused. Okay. I so apologize for that. Um, so as we speak, then you have no information that any official law enforcement agency acting as a law enforcement agency ever received a report in 2004? No. Is that correct? That's correct. I apologize for that. Were you uh, relying on that same um, mistaken belief when you were making decisions about Shelley in 2012, or are you? Or is that just a correction for today? That's just a correction for today. Okay. Thank you. Archbishop, uh, you have made a number of statements to the public and the parishioners that uh, the primary goal is to care for those abused by priests and um, uh, made promises to the people that um, that is one of your go goals, is it not? It is, it is yes. Um, you did make the decision, did you not, to permit the taxation of costs against uh, Jim Keenan had litigated against the archdiocese and have a judgment entered against him for 
a $64,000 for having brought that case. Uh, do you consider that to be consistent with a promise to care for the victims? I'm not familiar with that case. It was John Doe 76 C, and it was the one that went to the Supreme Court. And what on year was your watch? When, what, what year was that? 2010, I think. Uh, I, it's not registering with me. I'm sorry. Are you aware that the statute of limitations had? Uh, the Supreme Court had determined the statute limitations had expired and therefore his claim and others like it could not be brought? Did you learn that at some point? No, I don't believe I did. So you have no knowledge of the taxation of the cost against him? No. Okay. 